Mm-hmm. Mr. Thompson here with a math video lesson. Looking at probability, uh, continuing on in the series on probability, looking at multi-stage experiments, what they are, and how to sort them out using tree diagrams and tables. All right, jumping right in, let's do it. Okay, multi-stage experiments, what are they? This is when something happens more than once or when more than one thing happens, right? So pretty straightforward. For example, you might toss a coin and then you might toss it again, right? Or you could toss two coins at one time. And we wanna sort this out mathematically, work out the probabilities of what could happen, okay? Um, so let's look at an example. So we're going to um, do this with tree diagrams. So we have our uh, toss number one, right? We flip the first coin, uh, to flip the coin the first time, right? And the different outcomes that can happen are heads and tails, right? Um, and then for each of those outcomes, when we toss the coin again, there are another two potential outcomes, right? There's heads and tails the second time. So in this, what we have here is heads the first time, and then potentially heads or tails the second time, right? Likewise, if we got tails the first time, we can then get heads and uh, or tails after that as well, right? So that's toss number two, or coin flip number two or whatever. Um, and what we can then do is diagram, we can make a list of all the sort of sequences of what can potentially happen, right? We can list all the outcomes of this two-step experiment, right? So the first is that we have heads first and then heads again on the second roll, so heads and then heads, right? Or we could go heads and then tails, right? So heads, tails, or we could start with tails and then heads, or we could get tails both times, right? These are the four possible outcomes of our, um, of our experiment. Now, this, these two in the middle, the heads and then tails and tails and heads, they're, and if, if we're not concerned about the order of when they happen, then these are effectively the same uh, outcome, right? It's a heads and a tails, right? Now, if you're asked, what are the chances of having heads and then, uh, you know, followed by tails, heads first and then tails, there's only one of those. But um, if they just say, well, what are the chances of getting one of each? There's two opportunities for that to happen, okay? So two out of the total four. So that um, sequence, you know, um, of a heads and a tails, that, that combination, I should say, is 50% uh, chance you know, of getting one of each, right? It's 50-50 to get one of each um, heads and tails. Whereas there's only one scenario with both heads out of the four, so that's 25% chance, and same with two tails. Um, chances are 25% for that. Um, this, of course, this uh, list of outcomes is our sample space, right, with a, the sigma, okay? And um, there are four things in the sample space, so the number, as we uh, have here, the, the number in the sample space is four, right? Okay, that's pretty much the idea. That's how it goes. It can get a little more complex. Um, we can have things with more than two you know, outcomes for each um, uh, trial or whatever. Uh, and we can, have thing, we can do things more than twice as well. So we'll look at a little bit of each of those. Okay, and um, for the next uh, scenario, we're gonna look at outcome tables and why we might wanna use outcome tables. For example, if we're rolling a dice, okay, or a die, or whatever, however we say that, the different outcomes in one roll are one, two, three, four, five, and six, right? Now we can make a uh, tree diagram for that, right? After the one, if you rolled another die, if you rolled it again or rolled a second one, then the second, um, you know, out that set of outcomes would be one, two, three, four, five, and six as well, right? Now that's going to get pretty um, cumbersome and making a table with that, you either have to have really long lines or whatever, uh, and it's gonna get a little bit, com little bit complex. Um, another way to do this is with, um, as advertised, the um, outcome tables. And what we do is we put the second set of outcomes along the top, right, at an alternate uh, sort of uh, sides of, the, um, of, of what we're gonna have here, which is a big box, a table, okay? So we make our table, and you notice there's a column for each of the second you know, set of outcomes, and there's a row for each of the first set of outcomes. So we can take the ones, the one from the first um, roll and the one from the second, and put those together in our box right here, and say, well, one set of, uh, one combination of outcomes would be one and one, one on both of the dice, right? And likewise, we can go through and fill out our entire table 
um, for uh, every single possible outcome, right? So could start with a two and then have a one or a two and then a two and so on and so forth. And we get this big grid of uh, outcomes, right? This grid is um, six uh, boxes along the, the bottom or the top and six along the side. So six times six is 36. So there's a total of 36 different outcomes or in other words, the number in the sample space is 36, right? And so you might be asked all kinds of different questions about this like, what are the chances of rolling the same thing twice? It doesn't matter what you get, but if you roll a one, what are the chances of then rolling a one? Uh, or if you rolled a two and then getting a two, so any of those one and one, two and two, three and three, these there's, um, I'll, I'll write that out, um, the probability of the same number on both dice. doesn't matter what the number is. So there's this um, set of six outcomes that have the same number uh, twice in the box, right? So that's a total of six out of the 36 total possible combinations, right? Um, and so we can simplify that to one sixth, right? And you could calculate the uh, percentage uh, on that if you wanted to. Another example, what if we wanted to find the probability that the sum of the two numbers on the dice is greater than 10, right? More than 10, not equal to 10, but greater. Um, so if we take the two numbers, add them together, what are the chances that gives us more than 10? Well, we'll want to start down on the uh, upper end, you know, down here where the numbers are the highest, right? 6 plus 6 is more than, um, more than 10. 6 plus 5 is also more than 10. So there are these three different options, but then every other box, you know, either adds to 10 or to something less than 10. So there's the three total options out of our 36, right? So that simplifies to 1 12th, okay? And again, you can calculate the percentage on your calculator or whatever if you want, all right? So um, outcome tables rather than a um, tree diagram can be good, particularly when there's a lot of options for each trial. You know, this rolling a dice, you could get six different numbers rather than the heads or tails, the two options for rolling, uh, uh, flipping a coin, right? Now, even though um, the table was better for rolling a dice, if you're gonna do something, if there's gonna be three stages, so you're gonna flip a coin three times or roll a dice three times, the best visual diagram for this um, is going to be a tree diagram, okay? Um, because the a, a table can get, you know, there's not sort of, you'd have to have almost three dimensions or whatever for your table. Um, but whereas a tree diagram can come out pretty, pretty simply, we just have our first, our second, and our um, third toss, right? And each of the outcomes. Then we can go through and say, well, we can go heads uh, and heads and heads, right? Or we can go heads and then heads and then tails, heads, tails, heads, right? And we can list out all the possible outcomes. And of course there are eight um, outcomes in our sample space, right? Um, and so you might be asked something like, what is the probability that you get exactly one tails, right? Out of your three um, trials, if you get two heads and one tails in any order, right? Well, there are three, um, three s combinations where you come out with two heads and one tails, right? Out of the total of eight um, uh, in the sample space, right? So that would be three out of eight, right? And um, you can do lots of other um, probabilities. You might get asked all kinds of other questions and you can just use this list to um, sort it out. So tree diagrams, um, outcome tables, multi-stage experiments, Catch you next time.